Brockville and District Association for Community Involvement and Legacy Homes. They are two organizations that support each other very closely and work very closely together to make sure that good things happen for people in terms of living really rich lives in community and having homes of their own. The concept of Legacy Homes began during a two-year conversation with older families thinking about what they needed to secure the future for their sons and daughters and really looking at those different aspects of home life that they believed in. Most of those families really wanted their son and daughter to have a home of their own that met their individual needs and reflected who they are as people. So we really started with what is home. Those conversations, where you're gonna live later in your life and what you're gonna do, don't sort of happen at 21 or at 25 or at 30. It's a conversation that has to happen with families over a long period of time. And I think that the way that our two organizations work closely together, we can do that. We can start to foster that conversation, we can create the space for that conversation, uh, we can share the stories of people who have uh, moved into a legacy home and ha are living lives in community. We can share those stories with other families to inspire them, to give them something to look forward to, to aim towards, to grow into those kinds of ideas. So that relationship between the two organizations is really important and I think strengthens both of the, um, both of the organizations work. I lived to this part of it two years. I feel like happier. Not sad. Uh, my own hometown. Makes myself breakfast. Yeah, I put it in the counter, wash the dishes. Uh, watching movies. Music. All things. I have. PS2 games and Xbox games. By keeping supports and house and home separate, um, my role is able to keep focused on what is it that the person's looking to do in terms of life building and organizing the appropriate supports for what they're trying to achieve. By keeping that clear and by keeping the house piece separate, um, there's no risk of, of you know, somebody outside of the person dictating what's going on in someone's home. So by keeping things separate, the person whose home it is, um, and, and those, the family and network around them, have a, have a choice and, and control over who and how and what gets decided in their home. Just as you or I would, would expect. We don't ever want the supports to overstep and have more of a say and a focus in people's homes. What we do is we start the conversation really early with families about what does the future look like? Uh, where do you hope to live? And part of, the, part of that can be, you know, so was this a family that had traditions of hosting? Was this a family that um, really appreciated a busy place to live? Um, was this somebody who grew up with a very quiet, um, tranquil country home um, that doesn't want to live close to the train tracks? And so that needs to be thought about. And then when the conversation gets to a point where we think about a neighborhood, we think about what type of a, a place we would like to call home, um, we kind of have th what they're hoping to get out of it before we jump into the, f uh, the family being at a place of making a decision. So it's really keeping that spirit of imagination of home um, and what the feeling is that the person wants to see um, and have that guide the family search. After families identify a property that they feel would meet their son or daughter's needs, Legacy Homes will come in, do a home inspection, make sure that the property is suitable. Once that property is purchased, then the person and or their circle sign a life lease on that property. A life lease really gives them the option of staying there for the rest of their life, giving them security of tenure. Most of the families came from rural areas which were much more isolated 
And families recognized that as they got older, they wouldn't be able to travel as much to spend time with their sons or daughter. They also recognized that sons and daughters created a life in the communities where they grew up. And they wanted to ensure that that life continued the way it had been set up and had been working for all of their younger years. My name is Harry Pott. I'm Joel's dad. That Joel is nonverbal. He needs people to speak for him when he was with other people. He has seizures, so someone has to be around at all times supervising him and just keeping an eye on things. And, and our support staff have been very good at picking up on things like, let Joel just do his thing. You don't need to be beside him. You just carry on with what you're doing and just keep an eye on him. If he has a seizure, you may have to help him, that kind of thing. But don't stifle him and don't try to tell him what to do because he won't listen to you anyway. <laughs> Eight years ago, I decided that I was leaving an institution and wanted to do something different to make a change in someone's life. Um, this opportunity came about and I was asked if I wanted to join Joel's support staff. He did have a home in the city uh, when I first started supporting Joel. We uh, then decided that that home wasn't right for him. It was too urban. He loves being outside in open air and... And he has a lot more freedom here. He can, you know, be in his backyard doing his gardening, doing his things that he loves to be doing outside. So his daily activity has increased since living in the country. So we moved Joel from the home that we had bought from him into a legacy home because there were some financial uh, opportunities that existed that wouldn't exist if we owned the home. For instance, getting a rental subsidy, which is crucial for Joel. So the social housing in Leeds Grenville pro was providing rental subsidies. Joel applied and was accepted. The other thing is we don't pay property taxes. If he, we owned the home, we'd be paying property taxes because we were really subsidizing Joel's mortgage payments while he was living in the house that we owned, right? Right now, Legacy Homes is able to make those mortgage payments because of the rental assistance. He gets $785 a month, I think. That's a sizable chunk of money that he has access to now, and he didn't before. If, if somebody else wanted to go down this road, similar to you know a legacy, getting a legacy home, for instance, I, I would tell them, make sure you have a support plan in place. Make sure you have ways that the person can live in a home before you think about moving him into a home. All along the way, we had assistance that without that, we wouldn't make it. Other families that had similar challenges and similar opportunities, etc., got together with you and you shared stories and you learned from each other and you cried together, you laughed together. And the, for the disability movement, I think that's fundamental to what makes us what we are as a movement. It is, it is just such a powerful thing because I wouldn't make it on my own and nobody would, you know? And that's why community living is such a key phrase for what it's all about. Community living is for everyone. Amen.